I'll be wiring in these BMSs today. Protrude past the face just slightly. I'm going to see if I can get that here. Even though I have three modules, there's six batteries. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's two 48 volt batteries per module. The BMS is only switching the negative side of the battery right around here. So I need this negative wire to come down the front of the battery over and attach to the BMS. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this wire, okay? So I need to attach a ring terminal on this side, but also I'm going to use the rest of this wire and attach a ring terminal on it and it's going to come over to the other side. So I'm not wasting this wire. So I'll just label this as number two. So there we go. We've got number two on there. Now there's two sides to the BMS. One is labeled as B minus and one is C minus. So Bravo and Charlie. The Charlie side goes to the load or the charge controller. The Bravo side is what goes to the battery. As you can see, we got number two ready, four, six. Now these wires are attached on one side and not the other, so these still have to be attached. We move around to the back. I have both wires attached back here because one of them is going to go up to the screw terminal, which is going to be right there three and number one. Now number one has a little bit longer lead because I had to make it so it can kind of loop around. These ones can come up and attach. Here's our BMS's. Now one thing that has me a little bit concerned is the head of the bolt and the nut protrude past the face just slightly. I'm gonna see if I can get that here. So if the BMS is attached to the side of the battery, which is aluminum, this could make contact with that aluminum and then all the uh, aluminum plates and the st steel shell, which the plates are attached to, they would all be energized by the negative. And I don't want that to be the case. I want to try to keep it isolated. Uh, I picked up this stuff called plastic dip. First time ever using this. Now all of these bolts, I put some Loctite on the threads. I just did a little bit of the heat gun just to try to get it so it won't drip anymore hopefully. So let's go ahead and set this to the side. This kind of liquid rubber has been drying for about half an hour. Now number two is going to be sitting just like this.
Here's the screw terminal. To make this fit on here nice and tight, I actually drilled a new hole. So as you can see, I just drilled a new hole and cut off the old one. And that allows it to get in there real tight. Okay, so get a little bit more Loctite on here. I'm remembering my mock-ups here. I had to put this one over to the side. I'd like to point out something about mounting this BMS. There's the nuts on the back side there. Now I did coat them in that plastic, but I still don't want them to make contact with this aluminum plate. Notice this space here is carved out. I want these nuts, which protrude a little bit, to kind of fit themselves into this space so they're not physically in contact with this aluminum, even though the plastic is there. So what I need to do is get them kind of just like that when they're done. That way there's going to be an airspace, they're up a little bit, but notice how they want to fall down. So I want to get something underneath this that's going to hold this up from the bottom of the pan. So I'm going to go grab a little piece of cutting board. I'm trying out a new construction adhesive, new to me. Uh, I saw this at a show and they gave me this tube as a sample and it's supposed to work really well on non-porous materials. So I'm bonding aluminum to aluminum or for this bottom spacer, plastic to aluminum or plastic to steel. And so let's give this a shot. I really put a lot in there. This one. All the BMSs are glued in place. I'm going to use the multimeter and check to make sure that I'm not shorting out on anything. The trouble is that there's very little clearance from the back side of this BMS to where the shell is going to go on. And I've got to get this wire to kind of snake like that. What if I make it go in like that? Ha! That's cool, that worked. <laughs> nice. All these edges are soft. I had to put the BMS over here, but this wire needs to snake back around. So in order to get it to do that, I can't go across this hump. So I'm going to have to come up on the face of the, up here, like that. So I want to get some tape on here to hold that in place. So here's some all-weather flashing tape. Just to help with that transition. So now that wire makes a nice curve down to the BMS. I know it looks like a mess but it is going to be tight enough that the cover won't interfere with it which is what I need. 
So I'm going to go through and anywhere that there's spots where things might rub, I'm going to go and add uh, either more heat shrink tubing or more tape like this. This is actually a sharp edge right here. So I'm going to go and tape that sharp edge so that the wires are not right up against it. I'll do that all the way across anything that I see and I'll catch back with you later. I used a very thick rubber tape right here on the corner to protect that sharp edge. And then I've been taping down the BMS wires so they're holding real tight in and they're not going to go flopping all over the place now. Here you can see all the wires are taped down. Now the front side had the extra two big fat wires so they're also taped down together. Now these wires in the back, I've got to get this one tucked in there. And what I'm going to do with these two negatives, I'm going to actually feed them through here to go up to the front. And this one I'm going to wrap around on the side. All the way through. Great. And I've brought over the other ones. So we have all six negative wires right here. Isn't that awesome? Cool. Now I have to route the positives over to this side, which means I'm going to have to make three positive wires for right here. I moved this BMS over to the side instead of being up here because I knew that I'd have to run wires across the front and there's very little distance uh, between this face and where the metal shell is going to come down over the top, the lid. Okay, I made up three more positive wires. They have different lengths. Here's the shortest one. And I taped the ends of all of them so they won't short out on anything. With all these positive wires routed over to this side, the next big step is going to be mounting the circuit breakers. All the positive wires have to go to the circuit breakers. That way I can isolate each battery independently. I made a small tick mark here, and that's based on where the opening is on the uh, lid that's going to go over here. And so these circuit breakers are going to be mounted right here. Now these are DIN rail mounted circuit breakers. This is a DIN rail and it's a way to lock these in. So if I was to pull all these down like that, I can, I can put this on a DIN rail and then lock them in to it. So the DIN rail itself has to be attached so it'll be Cut right about here. Okay. I cut the DIN rail and I bent over a little tab and I drilled a couple of holes. What this will allow me to do is bring it in here and I'll be able to screw in this way. Drilling into a battery. That sounds like fun, right?
what I want to do is wrap this up with some tape. Uh, even though this is actually lower than the top of here, so it'd be really difficult for something to, to bang the lid and hit this, I still want to protect it a little bit more. Okay, double layer over the top, couple wraps around, I've got that insulated. The bottom of the circuit breakers are these cup style connectors. So I think that's fine for the fine strand wire. This is the positive from number one. Okay, cool. Now, this one here is number two. So bring number two down. There. Double checking all of them are off. Right. All the wires on there. Now I'm pressing up those clips in the back. And there we go. They're all off. Yeah, now all the wires get to come up. And now they're all parallel together using this plate, which I insulated the top of. And that's where we're gonna, these lugs are where we can now pull our main current from. All the BMS's are done. They're wired in place. They're glued. Nothing's moving around. The circuit breakers seem firmly attached. Everything looks good. Now I did dry fit the lid and nothing's interfering with the lid actually getting on top of the batteries. I put this bus bar back here and paralleled all the negatives. Now that's not how they're going to be done permanently because it's attached to the pallet. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, how I can now go through and, and test the, the battery. So I have to test every BMS. I have to program all the BMSs. I want to do a capacity test. Uh, this battery originally came out of the factory at 17.6 kilowatt hours. And I removed uh, several cells and some of the cells are, uh, you know, not gonna be as strong as they were originally. So I, I need to find out how much capacity we actually have left in here. Once I do that, check for heat, check for smoke. <laughs> Uh, then I can go and put the lid on, uh, and that'll be it. That'll, yeah, that'll be the end of it. <laughs> so thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and check out the links below and the Patreon link if you'd like to help support the channel.